Next up are Nick Johnson and Nick Graham, two entrepreneurs who share much more than the same first name. Feeling good? Yeah. So we know each other from school, actually, and Nick and I used to play rugby together when we were eight years old. Yeah, people say you never start businesses with your mates, and uh, yeah, I actually kind of agree. <laughs> <laughs> The two Nicks have a product which, though already well established across the pond, is yet to make a similarly big splash here in Britain. Trends typically follow from the United States over to Europe. We really think there's a huge growth opportunity here in the UK and we're right at the front of that wave. Hi Dragons, I'm Nick Graham and this is my old friend and business partner Nick Johnson. We're here today to ask for £120,000 for a 10% stake in our premium alcoholic drinks business. Dragons, I want to take you back to the summer of 2019, where Nick and myself visited Toronto in Canada. One beautiful evening, we visited this amazing park. Our friend suggested that we try these drinks. He said they were called a hard seltzer. We'd never heard of it. They were light, refreshing, fruity, alcoholic and delicious. Nothing really was the same back in the UK. We wanted to take that idea back to the UK and make our own version. And we named it after that incredible park where we first tried the drinks, Berksy. The result is three award-winning drinks. We're on track to record 260,000 pounds worth of sales uh, this year. We have international ambitions and plan to move into the US early next year. We'd absolutely love for you to try our drinks and we'd really welcome any questions. A new alcoholic drink category called hard seltzer is the trend on which Nick Johnson and Nick Graham are hoping to capitalise. You'll find three flavours, lemon and lime, peach and raspberry, and passion fruit and turmeric. They're asking for £120,000 in return for a 10% share in their business. Peter Jones has sampled the pair's products, so has the all-important taste test left him fizzing with enthusiasm. Nick and Nick. Yes. Yes, hi. It's good, because I can just say Nick, and you're going to want to be going to answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've had the first one, which is the passion fruit and turmeric, and it tastes like an alcoholic Barocca. Well, I think that's positive feedback. This one... I might be slurring by the time I get to the third one. <laughs> but this one, the peach and raspberry, yeah. It's your favourite. That's my favourite. Well, that's your best one. Yeah. In my opinion. It's, as well. our, it's our best seller, actually. Is it? Yeah. Look, I think your products are really good. Um, and I do think this sort of stuff will catch. There's no doubt about it. No, it's good to hear. Thank you. What's the demographic profile of your current customers? Typically, 60% of our customers are between the ages of 27 and 35 years old, 60% female skew. I'm not a, a, a drinker of this drink, sure. but. One of my colleagues is, and um, she is in the exact demographic you've described. Of course, yeah. And she always goes for vodka, lime and soda. Yes. And that tastes like that. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one, and vodka, lime soda, we get asked that question a lot. And I think one of the main distinguishing features of vodka, lime soda, you get the taste of the vodka. We use a completely neutral spirit. See, that's really interesting, because mm. that would be my thing about that. Sure. I can't taste the alcohol. Mm -hmm. You can add a shot of gin if you like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not now. I think, I think I'll, I think I'll <laughs> evaluate the business before you give me an extra yeah, shot of gin. Right. I think it's a good idea. Um, but what was the thinking about removing the taste of alcohol? So that's actually kind of what defines the hard seltzer category. It's more about the light fruit flavourings than it is tasting that kind of, you know, the botanicals with a gin or the, you know, when you're trying a vodka, you just know it's a vodka. Um, with hard seltzer, it's more about appreciating the fruit flavourings, basically. OK, thank you. Nick and Nick's distinctive new addition to the alcoholic drinks category has raised interest as well as glasses in the den. Now, Tuka Suleiman wants to get a flavour of the duo's numbers. So let's just go back to the first year's figures. You're on target to turn over 260,000. Yeah. What would be your gross profit? 60 to 70,000 pounds. Profit, if any? Um, there'll be a loss of around 200,000 pounds. Well, OK. And when do you think you'll actually make a profit? So in year four, we do turn a profit although we are spending very hard on the marketing side in our first three years. So we're turning negative net profits, and then in year four, we're about £100,000 
in net profit. My immediate concern with this business is the fact that you've said, quite honestly, you're going to lose quite a large amount of cash. Yeah. I worry because the growth that you're forecasting is tiny compared to the losses you're going to consume. I'm not sure you're going to have two to three years of building this sure. to demonstrate this model is going to be successful. Mm. Products like this, when they enter the market, if you look at all of the main drinks companies, they watch people like yourselves and they follow whichever path that takes. Of course. If you're going to take two to three years of losing cash, mm. that's a dangerous thing because that's when your market can be swiftly yeah. taken away from you. Unfortunately, we're in a, a bit of a difficult position with the market because we're reliant on the market of this product, which is hard seltzer, really taking off in the UK. So if it goes anything like the US, which is now a $4.1 billion market, um, the growth could be quite aggressive. All of the top five or six biggest distilleries, breweries, whatever you want to call them, have all launched their own hard seltzers here in the UK. They all have shelf space in all four of the major supermarkets. But it's important to note, you know, they're spending the money now to make the category huge, and we're hoping to kind of ride the wave at the top. The two Nicks intend to remain in the slipstream of drinks industry giants, before taking advantage of the growth and demand that those companies create. It's a strategy that's fraught with risk, and Sarah Davies wants to know if the pair have the credentials to pull it off. Can I just understand a little bit more about your background and what's led to this, this point? I've always been in retail, actually. Worked across Canada and the UK for a range of different retailers for third-party logistics providers. Have you ever considered being a Robbie Williams impersonator? Uh, <laughs> I was asked that exact you heard question. earlier today. Yeah. From there yeah. up, you look like Robbie. Robbie's a friend of mine. A, less, a far less good-looking version. <laughs> so, your logistics? Sales and marketing. I never wanted to do logistics again, really. <laughs> right, you're just from a logistics background? Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. More operations finance side for me. So, you're the numbers guy? I was looking to find that out. And also, which one was the sales guy? Yes. And yeah. actually, a bit disappointingly, I was looking to find out which was the drinks guy. I mean, I've invested in drinks businesses before in the den, but it's always been some sort of credibility in the industry. Sure. They've been there and done that, and now they're going there and doing that themselves, and I'm just backing them in an area they've already had success. I think it's worth noting we're currently using a consultant who was the ex-CEO of Carlsberg in the US, actually sold the business over there, and he's uh, helping us out and, uh, and mentoring us. So we definitely... That's useful mentors. information to throw in there. It's, yeah. them, it's those sort of things sure. that will alleviate that niggle up -go. The two Nicks believe they can tap into a source of expertise capable of transforming their drink startup into probably the best hard seltzer company in the world. Will Stephen Bartlett buy into the duo's vision for the future of alcoholic sparkling water? So this is really interesting for me because my brain's been a bit frazzled because here we have a product which I think is great. Mm. And when I asked about the target demographic, great answer. That's exactly what I was expecting. Yep. But then I look back at the brand and it also matches the target demographic. Yes. So it's all, it's all there. Mm. Then I look down at my piece of paper and I look at what you're asking for. You're asking for 120 grand. And it's like a balance. Uh, 120K is a lot of money. The chance that I'll get that back in the next 10 years, you know, with a healthy multiple on it, is probably quite unlikely. Mm. Um, and for me, the risk level here is just, just out of my reach. So I'm going to say that I wish you the very best, but, um, but I'm out. And I. I feel like I might regret that. Nick and Nick have lost their first dragon as risk outweighs reward for a rueful Stephen Bartlett. Peter Jones appears to have enjoyed the pair's tipple, but will he demonstrate a similar thirst to invest in their company? I like the product, as you can see, because I've got empty glasses here. And I want to say where I am before, whilst I can still speak. Of course. <laughs> um, I think the strategy of your burn isn't, isn't right. I go back to what I said, which was your forecast. That's not traction. You can't afford to do 260K worth of sales. Mm. You have to be 2 million of sales. Yeah, sure. Um, and then when you add to that, I think it does come back to experience of rolling this type of business model out. 
you need somebody on your team that's done this and been there and got the t-shirt because the speed at which you get this out there is actually critical. Otherwise, you are going to lose money slowly and I think that's not something as an investor I wanted to go on that journey with you. So I'm going to say that I'm out. Okay, thank you. The product is wonderful. Okay. Really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. You guys are two great producers in the sense that you're creating the movie, you've got the script, can you execute it? That's my concern. Because if you can't raise money in the next round, you're finished. Because you're going to burn enough money. You know, and unfortunately, I don't like to be in businesses that burn money unless there's a real big reward at the end. And I can't see no big reward at the end of this one. So for that reason, I'm out. Thanks anyway. I am not keen on a strategy that says me too, because you've got the big players who I completely understand, hopefully are gonna kind of forge their way into that market, but it means that to get yourself heard, you're gonna to have to spend a lot of money. And if, you're, if you get it wrong, you, you, you kind of state yourself as the me too, and that's the only place people ever see you. Um, and it just leaves me feeling, I, I don't know, and I can't invest thinking I don't know. So I'm really sorry, guys, I, I can't invest, I'm out. Treble trouble for the two Knicks as Tuka Suleiman, Peter Jones and Deborah Meaden all declare time on the deal. Only Sarah Davies now remains. Have the pair done enough to alleviate her earlier concerns regarding their lack of drinks industry expertise? So guys, on the product front, you have credibly explained to me today in a convincing way that I think this is going to be the next big thing. Hmm. Huge tick. Um, the bit that's not getting the tick from me, you haven't lived in that industry sure. and experienced the ups and downs of that industry. Neither have I. Hmm. So, you know, I don't know if I'm the right investor for you because it's not like I'd be the fourth spoke in the wheel hmm. able to, to bring that. And, and hmm. it, it's massively concerning me, guys, that that is not a level of expertise in your wheelhouse. So I can't invest it here. I'm out. Thank you. Good luck, though. Thanks yeah. for Good luck. In. Thank, Thank you. you. Sadly for Nick and Nick, they must head back down to the ground floor with nothing. But despite failing to shake any cash out of the dragons, their drinks business has stirred up that rarest of sentiments in the den, that this might just be the one that got away. Oh, well. Next time. From the moment I went out then, I sat there and thought, oh, I think I might regret this. We do think today has been a bit of a missed opportunity for the Dragons, but hopefully we'll be one of those brands that in a few years, they're, they're all looking at us and saying, oh, what could have been?